Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante of wikibon.org, and as I said before, we are unpacking a lot of the ServiceNow messaging, testing that with some of the customers of ServiceNow, IT practitioners. These are the people that are in the trenches. When we hear about you know, going from no to now, this is the, the faction of the organization, the IT organization, that is having to affect that transformation. I'm here with my colleague and co-host, Jeff Frick, Bart Murphy is here. He's the Vice President of Shared Services and he's also the Chief Technology Officer at CareWorks. And you've got many titles. You're also the President of one of the operations as, as well. So, Bart, thanks for taking some time out and coming in the queue. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So tell us a little bit about uh, uh, CareWorks. Uh, you were describing it as a sort of a holding company out of mm -hmm. Columbus, Ohio. Tell us about the businesses that you're in and, and specifically your role. So CareWorks is a, a family of companies that consists of six companies. Uh, five are in the healthcare space, mostly around the workers' comp uh, and medical management uh, area of, of the industry. And our sixth company is an, actually an outward-facing consulting company from a technology perspective, which I'm the president of as well. Okay, so you actually sell technology services. We do, so uh, you know, I manage all I the that. internal IT uh, resources and infrastructure and also then manage our external facing organization which goes out and helps and consults uh, other clients and so we've implemented ServiceNow actually within both uh, all of the five companies within one instance and our external facing company within one instance because we do manage services uh, so there's some different requirements on each of those instances. I, I always love stories of, of you know, turning IT as a cost center into a profit center. So Absolutely. We'll talk some more about that. <laughs> yeah. What are the, but before we do, tell us about the unique drivers in, in your business. Healthcare, obviously highly regulated. Yep. Uh, there's you know, Obamacare, all kinds of transformation there. What's driving your business right now? Uh, well, I mean, obviously you mentioned the regulations uh, are driving our business, uh, upgrades, you know, everything from 5010 in, the, in that space to ICD-10, uh, and those mandates that are coming down are driving our business. And certainly I think just trying to get uh, care and the cost of care under control. Uh, so our value proposition typically when we do the managed care is that we're doing it with a high degree of accuracy. Uh, we're reducing the cost on the, on the bill review cycle and we're getting injured workers back to work, which eventually would lower premiums uh, for those employers. Yeah, and improve productivity for the, for the country. Absolutely, right? right? <laughs> okay, so how do those, uh, those pressures drive your IT strategy? Well, I mean, uh, so a little bit of background. From an IT strategy perspective, uh, the, the largest company that we have is a managed care organization. They had outsourced their IT for close to 15 years. Uh, when I got brought in, we talk about my role as the CTO, I was brought in to uh, build and insource all of that technology capability, which none of it was transferable from the outsource model. So we built up that capability and really had a, a chance to start and just look at the landscape fresh and say, what type of platforms do we need in our organization to become a high performing IT organization to help be a strategic asset to the business? I think that the, uh, their sort of relationship over the years became less and less strategic and they really couldn't move the needle on their assets in order to generate top line growth or you know, improve productivity and reduce costs. So part of that was ensuring that we built a, a shared services platform that could then support all the family companies because they both had, they had sort of siloed IT up until that point, including one of the largest companies outsourced their IT. So we had to look at a platform and I had to look at a platform that could help me run the business of IT so I could focus on the innovation of the enterprise. Uh, and that's really why I looked at uh, ServiceNow. So a great opportunity really for Greenfield. I mean, the bad yep. news is none of that old stuff was uh, transferable. The good news is none of that old stuff was transferable. Yeah, and you <laughs> know, th th from that perspective, it did drive having the largest company in source and let us do some Greenfield. The other companies did have some established systems uh, okay. that we had to replace, but you know, I, I, the, the ease of use and the ability to convert into the system uh, didn't present an issue. But the value that we got uh, with all the modules and all the other components to, again, run a shared services organization that's supporting six companies, you know, the value that I got from that platform far outweighed any of uh, the sort of investment that was made year to date, sure. or, or even history to date, uh, on those other assets. Yeah. So, so what, was it, what was the driver to bring in service now? What was life like beforehand? Let's start there. Uh, you know, each, uh, I think each uh, business had a different sort of customer interaction with IT uh, based on their level of sophistication. We either bought companies or organically grew them from start. So uh, the level of sophistication within IT varied within each company. Uh, the interaction with IT certainly varied, uh, you know, depending on the type of platforms they used or 
email or tapping on the shoulder <laughs> uh, type of stuff. So there was no real consistent uh, way to approach work uh, and to work with our end users. And also within our companies, we have both corporate users and we have one company where it's all remote users. And that experience vastly uh, was different from a customer service and satisfaction perspective than the corporate users you know, to our uh, out in the field users. So trying to create a standardized way to interface with our business, uh, regardless of company A, B, C, or D, uh, and regardless of what type of technology stack that they're working on, and that's what ServiceNow allowed us to do. So specifically consolidating all these shared services. Yeah. And then as, as a byproduct of that, I mean, we keep hearing stories about people running on spreadsheets or disparate tools or yeah. emails. Was that, is that an accurate description? Of yeah, it's accurate 100%, and I think every company has that, uh, depending on how they've grown, uh, and we were no different. Um, you know, we've used uh, ServiceNow to do uh, standardization not only of the service that we're providing to our customers, but also to create some standardization on our controls and processes. Uh, we use GRC, which is the Governance, Risk, and Compliance module, to, uh, we're highly regulated, so we're, uh, there's an audit going on almost every day of, of the year, whether we're doing it internally or whether we're getting audited by an auditor. And each company's on a little bit of a different cycle so that we can help support that. So we've been able to centralize all of our audit testing, all of our control testing, automate schedules around that, which has then in turn reduced our fees uh, from an audit perspective. So there's tangible ROI with that level of standardization, not just within IT and tickets, but within spreading that out into business operations and IT operations like audit, for example. As that tangible ROI measured in the cost of, of, of achieving compliance, the productivity impact? Oh yeah, right. so not getting fined, right, is always good. Yeah, okay. uh, not having exceptions on your report is good. And being able to reduce your professional fees because they're willing to accept your rigors of testing uh, is another key component to help drive down those consulting fees that you're paying on a yearly basis. So there's the lower risk, you mentioned not getting fined, and yeah. then the, the better, better productivity. And then are the, the original five units or six units then customers of the, the IT services firm, or is that, did, yeah. you, did you do that? Just, you know, we talked before about you know, transfer costs and mm -hmm. you know, really getting a handle and more uh, organized around that. Yep, so the, the way we approached it, and uh, this is before my time with the founder, they bought a technology company about eight years ago. Uh, knowing that one of their largest companies was outsourced and they need to start building that capability internally. Uh, that, uh, that company internally in our consulting division helps stand up a lot of our organizations that we started organically. There's other companies that we purchased which had their own IT assets that came into the organization. So we have this sort of mix of capabilities that we've built ourselves to help support maybe a startup of one of our companies to bringing in uh, established uh, assets on different technology platforms that we needed to manage as well. Okay. So part of it was to build up that internal capability so that we could be a strategic asset to the business. Uh, you know, it's good that there's CEOs out there and CFOs out there that see IT as a differentiator to their business and that's how they view us within our organization. We are not simply a commodity. They understand that that's just not the case, especially in a high complex world as it is in managed care and healthcare. Do you think that is a sentiment that is generally changing in the industry, i.e. that IT can be a source of competitive advantage, or do you think that's unique to your organization and your executive management? I think it's unique to IT teams that can actually speak to the business and, and be that partner at the table to strategically plan with them what is actually possible with the technology and how that translates to top line growth and speak in their terms. So, I don't think it's something that's necessarily special to what we're doing. I think it's, we've shifted our IT priorities to not just be what IT is doing, but to try to be that partner at the table with the business on how to grow it. So I can infer from what you just said that, that you believe that IT is, it can be a differentiator uh, from a competitive advantage standpoint, but you've got to have the right people, the right culture, the right philosophies to make it happen, it's yep. not just going to happen on its own. It's not going to happen on its own, and I think it's been proven uh, with you know, the different uh, trends that we've seen from an outsourcing, all those type of components, but I think when you look at companies that are really uh, making things happen uh, in the industry or those forward-thinking companies, many of them, if you go back, they have very strategic IT assets. They have very automated processes. They've been able to bring the cost down so that they can invest in innovation and, and do less time on maintenance. Uh, that's a real big driver within my team. And you know, maintenance to me and technical debt, all those type of components that you hear about that make IT sort of a cost center to the business, it's not bringing tangible value to them. 
uh, is spending time on things like an upgrade of a uh, IT service management platform that hasn't been touched in seven years. You know, and it's 2,000 hours and a bunch of money, and that's the type of stuff that I want to stay away from. That's why a cloud provider like ServiceNow brings value to me, because I don't have to be distracted with an internal IT project simply because I've ran out of support or those type of things, and I can focus more on what is a good business innovative idea that we need to bring into our systems uh, to help them grow revenue. Did you do a detailed business case before you brought in ServiceNow, or was it more just kind of, hey, this makes sense? We did do a detailed business case. I think, you know, from the standpoint of what we thought the upgrade costs were going to be, uh, you know, again, that cost of labor every three years, the licensing, uh, but we also looked at the full package, you know, so you get sort of, you know, it's one of those great things and bad things. You get all this functionality within ServiceNow, you get to choose how you're going to use it, uh, and you need to build, build out a roadmap in order to leverage that to sort of retire redundant systems. So that's the, the sort of the roadmap that we built and the business case we built was all around that, and trying to get rid of redundant systems, get standardization, and really build out a shared services organization which did not exist. So the hard dollars were sort of you know, ongoing maintenance mm -hmm. and new CapEx on, on legacy systems, yep. and then the soft dollars were the productivity impacts, and, mm -hmm. and, and it, I'm assuming that because your executive management seems to be pretty IT savvy, that those soft dollars were a major factor in the, mm -hmm. the business case. They weren't just redlined and ignored, like yep. oftentimes business cases. Yeah, are. and we do that in operations as well. So it's not a foreign concept yeah. uh, to, our, or to our business. And we relate automation to other soft costs and hard costs as well. Uh, so I think you have to look at it holistically and the total cost of ownership not just a year one return. Other than the, the plan to effectively retire older systems, what were your concerns about bringing ServiceNow on? You know, uh, to be honest, uh, I had concerns if I didn't bring ServiceNow in. Uh, my team, I did a team-based uh, procurement. Uh, my team, it was 100% a, a votes to ServiceNow and not one vote to another uh, supplier that we had that in. That's right. Yeah, so from that perspective, you know, to have an IT team that's excited to work on a platform, you know, we all want to enjoy our job. Uh, service management is not a sexy business. Uh, you know, IT service management is certainly not. Uh, so to, to, to make it fun again and to make a platform that people can use and, and easily configure to, to automate, we've automated onboarding, offboarding, you know, important sort of processes to automate, but they just aren't, you know, they aren't the, the most fun to work on, right? So to get sort of your team excited about a platform, uh, to get them bought in, you know, it really was a good key differentiator as well yeah. uh, in looking at service. What now. about some of that tedium out? Yeah, the only, the only problem you have is you have to really build your talent, you know, and uh, you have to build your organization. It's a new skill set, and right. you have to really invest on the training side, which was another component that we talked about during the procurement, was that, you know, we wanted to be self-sufficient. Um, I want my teams all to be self-sufficient. We shouldn't rely on any partner, it's good to have them, but we shouldn't have to rely on anyone. Yeah, and so you have to do a good investment there to make sure that you're getting team ramped up in a manner where they can effectively move that needle on the platform. So that was part of the business case too, that sort of Absolutely. training and, and mm -hmm. reskilling and so forth. What about the, the security question? You're yeah. highly regulated you yeah. know, industry. Uh, talk, tell us about the discourse and the narrative internally prior yeah. to bringing in service now. Well, uh, my IT compliance director uh, reviewed the solution. Um, you know, we do some certain things, we lock it down from an IP perspective. Uh, that's why we have two instances of service now. One that sort of serves our external consulting business, the other that serves our internal. So we've done some things to sort of limit that risk, uh, even being in the cloud. But I think more and more regulators and other people are getting very mature in understanding these cloud solutions and sort of where their value is and where the risk is and how well they manage it from a data center perspective from an audit perspective, from all their controls that they have in place, which we can then leverage in our audits as well. And we've had no issues uh, from an audit perspective at all uh, since we've gone live. And did you, um, prior to bringing in ServiceNow, did you get some outside help you know, from whatever, cloud, ser cloud broker, cloud service provider? We did, uh, so uh, you mean as far as our implementation? Yeah. We had a, 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 a consulting partner uh, that came in for about, I'd say 30, 60 days, and again, the whole, the whole point there was to not only help us stand up our instance, because we had to insource and build 15 systems, so this was just another one. Uh, they not, I only wanted them to help us, but I also wanted them to pair with us so that we could become self-sufficient. Uh, it's not that I don't uh, like consulting, I do, but I want to use them strategically, uh, not as a, as a crutch to my team. So we actually talked about it with them up front, so these are the things that we want to do to make sure that in 60 days, you're out of here, and we're actually 
doing the rest of this deployment and these modules and these phases by ourselves. And if we need help, we'll give you a call. And how significant was the skills transformation that you guys had to affect? Again, I think when you have people excited about working on the platform, it's a much easier adoption rate. So, uh, although, you know, I would say it's not as difficult as some of the other platforms that people have worked on in the past. My team has had experience with some of the other larger uh, implementations and they really find this tool to be easy to use. Mm -hmm. uh, once they get familiar with the scripting components, some of the, the nuances of the platform, uh, we haven't found somebody that hasn't been able to get it. And, and what, what made them so excited? Was it, did somebody come from somebody else and they'd worked on it before and was mm -hmm. there inside evangelist or? No, really no real evangelist. Or, no you know? real evangelist. They just came from other systems where they had either a nightmare scenario with upgrades, they had a nightmare from an admin perspective as far as trying to manage it. They just weren't good systems as it right. Now it could be just a product of the time. You know, yeah. they could have been implemented 10 years ago. Right. Uh, but as far as a platform for us moving forward, and for me trying to look at cloud solutions as a CIO and CTO to say, where can I invest in the cloud that's not strategic from an asset perspective for me, so that I can focus on the business assets versus things that run IT. Right. And so I think those things combined along with you know, the ease of use and the platform, those things all resonate with the team. Anything that uh, you really want ServiceNow to do that would make your life better? What's on their to-do list? You know, uh, on my to-do list is actually to try to get through more of the modules. Uh, okay. So I think <laughs> it's just a constant investment. Uh, we're working on asset management, license management now. Um, I think it's just a, you have to have a consistent method to implementing ServiceNow. You can't take a break for six months. You can't wait a year. You have to constantly be improving it and looking at ways uh, to reduce my overall cost and structure of IT and to articulate that cost back out to these different business units. Which So that cost center accounting it's helping me with, that activity-based uh, accounting it's helping me with, where I didn't have those systems in place before. So that's your main advice, that was my other question, advice to yeah. IT practice. You're saying keep exploiting the platform. You have to, right? And it's not to invest everything in service now, but there's, there's tangible benefits to the modules that they have, and there's even more of a benefit to have it in one repository that you can report off of. Uh, which creates a lot of efficiencies for us as it relates to capital spending planning, budget planning, go down the list, right? License renewals, all those things. If I can have one sort of system of record, hey, that's a win for us. All right, Bart Murphy, great story. We're, we're out of time. Really appreciate you stopping by theCUBE and Thanks for sharing your advice with IT practitioners. You're very welcome. Uh, we are unpacking uh, the customer perspective here, looking at how the ServiceNow messaging resonates with the customers and what they're actually doing with the platform. Uh, let's see, we've got FICO uh, and Yale University up next after this break. Keep it right there, I'm Dave Vellante with Wikibon with my co-host Jeff Frick. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back.